My name is Darren McCubbin. I'm a writer, I'm a performer, I'm a father, which I'm very proud of, and I'm also a local councillor. I'm a politician, and quite frankly, I think, yeah, indeed, thank you, and I, and I quite like to think that politics is a noble profession. <laughs> there you go. I knew I'd encourage you to leave the room in a hurry. Uh, Yes, indeed I do. And I mean, many years ago, 15 odd years ago, I decided that my local council didn't know what they were doing. And uh, maybe they still don't, I don't know. So I decided to put my hand up to try to defeat that, to try to become part of it. And that, and that really is what politics is about. It's about making your voice heard. It's about sitting in the driver's seat of government, of going through the, the, the difficulties of that and try to make a difference in the lives of real people, to try to change people's attitudes, change people's opinions. And that's a tough thing to do. And right from the very start, it's a tough thing to do because you've got to stand in front of a photo of yourself looking like a complete jerk and, and say all sorts of things, you know, like, please vote for me. And you are just incredibly embarrassed by that. It is actually really tricky to stick yourself, your hand up, to stand out from the crowd and to say, I think I can solve some of these problems. I think I have the answers to things. I think you should vote for me. I should do something. It is incredibly embarrassing to do that. And maybe it's our culture in Australia which stops us from putting our hands up and going out and doing things. And I get that. I get that. I do a lot of work in primary schools, and maybe this is where it starts. And please, I'm a, I was a teacher myself for many years. I love teachers. Teachers are fantastic, okay? I get that. But I do a lot of work in primary schools. And if you've ever worked in, like, preps, if you ever go into preps and talk to preps, you can ask a prep any question you want. What colour is this? What colour's my, what colour's my jacket? Ask a group of preps, what colour's your jacket? And every prep, every prep will thrust their hand into the air. Ah! Pick me! Pick me! Pick me! And it's great because you can say things to the preps. You can say, I'll pick up, I'll, I'll, I'll get the prep who's sitting up the straightest. So the preps will go, and some of them won't even breathe because they know if they breathe, they won't be sitting up the straightest. And eventually, after a couple of minutes, they start to collapse. Now, don't do that, okay? That's cruel to preps, so we don't do that. But they're thrusting their hand into the air. Bit And I'll say, okay, great, 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 great. Um, um, what colour's my, my jacket? What colour's my jacket? And you'll pick somebody. You'll pick you. <laughs> And they'll say, they'll say proudly, my dog's name is Buffy. <laughs> yeah, I got a dog and he's called Buffy and he's really good and he's, and he's great and he's called Buffy. I don't know. Because preps say whatever comes into their head. They don't care, they just say anything. They say and do anything because they don't care. And, and I don't know what it's like, but usually there's somebody, somebody who's well-meaning and they say, you're an idiot. You, you know, you, you, Darren asked you what colour his suit was and you told us about your dog. You said your dog's name is Buffy. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> you know, you're an idiot. Don't say that. And I don't know what it is, but by the time those young, impressionable preps, those little kids, by the time those kids get to sort of year nine, you can ask a year nine anything. You can ask them anything. You can say, will somebody here tell me their own name? And no longer are they thrusting their hands up in the air. They're all sitting there like that, going, I'm not telling him what my name is. You know, I remember in grade preps, I put my hand up and said my name, dog's name is Buffy, and I got laughed at for years. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe we're all scared, maybe it's an Australian thing, that we're too scared to kind of thrust ourselves forward, to kind of have a dream and to stand up in front of other people, to proudly, but say to the world what we stand for. But that's what we have to do. Each and every one of you have to stand up, put your hand in the air and shout out proudly, my dog's name is Buffy and I don't care what you think. <laughs> Maybe I went too far. Maybe I went too far. But that is part of the journey. Part of the journey, it's, it's pretty simple, really. This is it. This is the meaning of life. This is the meaning of what's going on. It's, it's two-stage process. Stage one, 
Find your hero's journey. Find something you want to be. Find, find an occupation or, or something. Find something you want to do. And the second part of it is do it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Find what makes you you. Find out what connects with you and do it. <laughs> That's it. That's the meaning of life. That is it. That's how you are happy. Because imagine, imagine, imagine. Imagine if you do something because your, your dad says, oh, you know, he's pretty smart with figures. Or your uncle says, you know, you should be an accountant. Or you, you kind of follow the path of least resistance. You become an accountant. And after 50 years of being an accountant, you kind of finish being an accountant. And they shake your hand and they say, Darren, you're a damn good accountant. And you think, you know what? I wanted to play in a band. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to start a charity. I wanted to free do human rights. I wanted to solve the world's problems and, and, I, and I'm an accountant. Imagine how happy you'd be if that was you. Imagine. If you, so it's that simple. Find what connects with you and make it happen. That's what you need to do. That's your hero's journey. That's the quest you were all on. To find that vocation, find the thing that makes you tick, and to go out and action it. Action it. Action it. And it doesn't have to be something big like, like saving the planet or, or, or anything like that. It doesn't have to be big. You might not even know what it is. It might be a state of mind. It might be a state of mind. I, I did this gig two weeks ago to Trident Computing Systems. Trident Computing Systems, a big computer op operator in Melbourne. And I entertain them. And I remember turning up to the conference and this bloke called Roger, in a suit, very nice, comes up to me and he goes, Darren, he remembered my name. I was pretty impressed. And because uh, I worked them last year. And he said, Darren, you're here. Great. Come along. Come in, here, come in this room here. Come in here and do this and that stuff. And Roger helped me out. Roger was really good. And I remember going up to Katie, who's the CEO, and I said, you know, uh, that bloke Roger, He's really good, isn't he? He's really good. And she said, yep. She said, I'm going to tell you Roger's story. And I've asked Roger's permission to tell Roger's story, incidentally. Um, I, she said, I'll tell you Roger's story. Roger was working in a 7-Eleven. And she said, one night, late at night, I wanted a Caramello Koala. I love Caramello Koalas, she says. She's a CEO of a big company, but she just loves Caramel Koalas. I went in, I went in, and this bloke behind the counter, I don't know what it was, but he was so full of energy and vitality and so keen to help me, he said, I will get you a Caramello Koala. There wasn't any. He went out the back. He went searching for Caramello Koalas. He found her, a Caramello Koala, and he handed her a Caramello Koala. He was a bloke working at a 7-Eleven, and he and he did all this to help this person out. A person he didn't know. She wasn't wearing a name badge. She was, a, she was just some woman who'd come off the street. But he, but he wanted to help her get a Caramello Koala. And as she bought the Caramello Koala and she turned towards the door, she stopped. Something occurred to her. She turned back and she turned to Roger and she said, if you send me your CV in the morning, I could have a job for you. Because she says to me later, she says, I always do that. I ask people to send me their CV by the morning. If they're fair income, they'll send it to me. If they're not fair income, they'll take days. And so Roger, true to his word, within 24 hours, in fact, within eight hours, she said, sent a CV. She saw his enthusiasm. She saw what he wanted to do. She hired him. He's now head of, his, head of her HR department after a couple of years. He was working at a 7-Eleven. He's now in this company going places, doing things. What was his vocation? I, I'm not really sure, but I, what I do know was that he had set himself up to be the best person he possibly could be. He gave good service to everybody he met. He tried to spread joy and love. Maybe that's not a hero's... I think it is a hero's quest that you be, decide to become something and be the best you possibly can to be at it. You people have all begun that quest by at least stepping out, coming to this two days of excitement, of listening to these stories. You've started that journey. Good on you. Good on you. You've started to think about what you want to do. And more importantly, you've done some action. You've found out from other people what makes them tick, what makes them go. Good on you. In my opinion, you are already beginning your hero's journey. 
So give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. 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 Now you just need to keep doing it. Now you just need to keep going. You just need to action it. You need to find what makes you tick, find what makes you do, and go out there and do it. Be like Roger. Give the best possible a, 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 a service to everybody you meet. Maybe do that. Maybe go and change the world. Because I tell you, we need that. We absolutely need that. My generation stuffed up the planet. Your generation needs to fix it, okay? That's what needs to happen. Can I just say one last thing? And this is the last thing I need to do. And that is to thank the people who have made this two days. I've only been here for a short time, but what I've seen is truly inspiring. And I know that Matt has collected a group of people together to do that. He has done a wonderful job in doing that. And it's really amazing. We're in Yarram. And like everybody goes, you know, because the next time they talk, they're going to Michigan. You know, this thing happens in London and the Netherlands and here in Yarram. And that might seem strange to people. That might seem really weird. It's not really weird. Do you know the best land in the world? The best land in the world? The best one? Disneyland. Yeah. There's n n absolutely, it's Disneyland. And when you wander into Disneyland, before you go into the Adventureland and Tomorrowland and futuristic sea world land, I don't know, but you've got to go down the main street because Walt wanted that the core of this great land was a simple street, the street of Mesopied or something? I don't know. It's a small town of which he grew up in, which he said em em emboldened and, and created him, a set of community values which he keeps to this day. It's a town of about 2,000 people. It's in Missouri. I can't remember the name of it. But um, it's a wonderful place. It is the heart of all good things is a small town. Yarram is the heart of that. It is not unusual. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And so it is not unusual that we begin our hero's quest in our main street, in a beautiful main street. And Matt, thank you for coming to our main street. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.